Will am I now? Don't worry about Will I be now. Let's see how much of the earth is gonna know me. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord Yah, as the water cover the sea. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. Yahweh chose us to bless the whole world. All people of the world, all nations of the earth are blessed through us. In case you're wondering why the world is catching hell, there's a reason. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, read. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. At the moment, all families of the earth are cursed. No rational person will deny that all the families of the earth are presently cursed. You have Iraq just blew a big hole in a ship in the Persian Gulf. Killed about 30 or so Americans. That's over 10,000 miles from these shores. Over in somebody else's territory. Anytime your ship is blown apart and you lose 30 of your people, that doesn't sound like a blessing. And just today, Yahweh brought a tornado through Texas and killed up a lot of people. Now, if you don't know that's an act of God, Yahweh, tornadoes, they read your insurance policies. And without exception, your insurance policies state they will not insure or pay off for acts of God. No insurance policy wants to pay off for acts of God. Then they tell you, in case you don't know, go get your insurance policies and read what the acts of God are that they don't want to pay for. Tornadoes. Hurricanes. Earthquakes. Floods, volcano eruption, these are some of the samples of the acts of God that men with money don't want to have to pay for, especially when he gets upset. When God gets upset, Nobody wants to pay out of their pocket for that because he is devastated. That's why you read in Psalms 47 that he's a mighty and terrible God. See, he's good and he's love, but he's, he's mean. And he will kill you. If you don't believe that, go back and try to find the people in the days of Noah. Yahweh was so upset he killed everybody on the earth but eight people. Right in Genesis. And he told you why he did it. He said, the people thought evil continually all the day and night long. They, they, they just thought evil all the time. And he got upset and said, I repent for having made man. Genesis chapter 6. I don't want you to think I'm making this up. But people... Genesis chapter 6. 
People want to tell you that God is all love like he doesn't have a wrathful side. Which means that, that false religious leaders are causing the people of the earth to make a mistake about the nature of God, Yahweh. That you can do anything you want to and just say, God understands. Well, you, you got the wrong kind of God that understands. The God that made the sun, moon, and stars, the air you breathe, the water you drink, and the food you eat, he doesn't understand you being evil. Period. And he will get you for that. Why am I bringing this side up? It's because the nations of the earth are not taught this side. That's why the world is being destroyed because they think they can do anything against the creator. And everything will be all right somehow. Genesis 6 verse 5. Read. And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, who can deny that's the state of mind of America? I have the answer and the cure to all of it. I'm here to heal all the people of the land that want to be healed, regardless of your nationality. Notice Yahweh said that the wickedness of man was great. Porno houses in America. Pornographic literature. They take women and just strip them totally nude and take cameras and go all up in the birth canal and, and then teach people to freak off and be nutty about that. Wicked. Profanity all over the land. You, you can't go anywhere in America without hearing profane language. Filth, mouth, just filthy continually all the day long. Woman cursed out woman, woman cursed out man. Man cursed out man, man cursed out woman. Kid cursed out kid, kid cursed out adults. The adults curse the kids out. They lay back and use language that you can't imagine a child could think up. And they didn't. They were taught this. Rape, murder, burglary. Almost the whole country is a bunch of drug addicts. She has a little drugstore in her medicine cabinet. <laughs> she thinks she's all right because she went to the, to the drug dealer, the doctor. <laughs> Biggest drug dealers on earth are doctors and pharmace pharmaceutical companies. And your local pharmacist at the drug store. You can go to the store and get all the drugs you need. Then, the, then the, all the other drug addicts upset about the drug addicts on the corner. Ones on the corner just don't go through a doctor. I don't need his permission. I just go to the corner and get it. Go through all that trouble playing no game and go on and get what they want. One set of drug addicts upset with the other set. A country of psychosomatics. 85% of the people who go to the hospital and get operations don't need it. They're not, not sick physically at all. America's full of disease, all kinds of disease, cancer, heart attack, stroke, improper diet, because man is going against the laws that Yahweh set down for us to eat. 
by. And those of us that eat according to his law, we look good. Longer. We feel better. Longer. Let's see. We're going to see how God feels about wickedness. Verse 6. Read. Now see, Yahweh is not a spirit, see? Yahweh has a heart and he grieves. You can cause Yahweh to grieve. But the only thing that upsets him is what? Wickedness. Say he repented. I'm having thoughts about why did I make man? I made man to be good, but he's the opposite of what I made him for. He seems to love that which I condemn. He wants to go against what I lay down. And I made him. So it grieved Yahweh in his heart. And let's see how, what, what he felt about it. First of all, you're looking at the fact that it grieves him. So you think you can cause God to grieve on and on and on and nothing's going to happen. You really think that? Let's read the next verse and see what he said he would do about it. Read. And the Lord Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Look at that. Was that mean of God? His creation. He does what he wants with it. That's what makes him God. People in America are just one of many nations that love wickedness. Love wickedness. They have nightclubs, clubs at night. They have day clubs too, but they have clubs for the night. That is only wicked. People do not go to nightclubs to practice charity, benevolence. <laughs> and to establish sagaciousness. There is not a soul present who will say that that's the purpose of nightclubs. To do the works of righteousness and good. That this is where honorable men gather to learn about and practice honesty. Nightclubs are not places where men and women go to be with their families. It's a place where families are broken up. Sometimes fights break out because of uh, the wife is looking at him, not the husband, but another him. And she slaps his face because he's looking at somebody else. Nightclub. And they all get drunk, stumble out, and go hit somebody with an automobile. Death and destruction as a result of the mind of man thinking wickedness continually. So we see here that Yahweh decided to destroy man from the earth. And he was so upset that he said, I'm going to destroy both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For I'm so upset, I'm sorry I made them too. 
because man has taken the fowl and the geese and the chicken. He having sex with chickens. He gives them a hemorrhage. You find your ducks and stuff laying out dead. <laughs> Died from a hemorrhage. Poor things. You know what they did to the duck and the chicken and the goose. They're taking the cows and the cows would rather have a man, the heifer would rather have a man than a bull. And some old fool would rather have a sheep than a woman. Well, that's where your diseases come from, your social diseases, gonorrhea. In a cow is called bangs. Nothing but super gonorrhea. Bangs and gonorrhea are the same. So men of the earth who do not fear Yahweh have ruined the animals and caught animal diseases, then come back to the human family and spread it. So Yahweh said, I just will destroy the, the cows and all, all them too because they, they don't know what they're supposed to do anymore. Other men have a dog as man's best friend. Poor thing. Some of the women lay with the dogs and the men with the dogs. Then the dog's nature is all crossed up. He, he forget where he is because he doesn't have no sense about social de decency. So he'll come out and show the world what he was taught at home. He'll crawl right up on a woman's leg in public. <laughs> Why? Because he's been taught that at home. You have to love me because I'm a plain teacher. You, I have to give it to you clear so you can understand. Now, it is a fact that I am erudite. Yeah. And I can speak on highly sophisticated terminologies. But I don't want anybody that's weak-minded to not understand what I'm saying. Unless you have an excuse against God. Say, so you should have made it plain. I would have stopped my wickedness. Well, I'm making it plain. Why were there some people saved? Read verse 8. Read. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord Yahweh. Wonder why Noah found grace? He was a righteous man. Noah was just man and a perfect man. Verse 9, read. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with Yahweh. Yahweh has a heart. He walks. He walked with Adam. And he was still around, walking around when Noah was here. For Noah walked with him. And Noah was a just man, the means a moral man. So those that believed in Noah, those who believed the message of Noah, were allowed to be saved with him, and they totaled eight people. Out of millions of people on the earth, eight, that's a small number. All of you sitting in here and all the people on the earth came from those eight. All the people on the planet earth came from those eight. Because Yahweh killed out all those millions of others. And the people of the earth have not learned a lesson from Noah. So I go over here in the New Testament where Yahweh said, as it was in the days of Noah, Matthew chapter 24, what does Noah have to do with us today? There's coming a day soon that the heaven and earth as you know it is going to pass away. Heaven for the wicked. The wicked idea of heaven. I'm putting on public notice.
You're about to pass away. The whole earth of the week. See, when Yahweh destroyed the earth, he, he kept eight people on it. They had to float around about 40 days and 40 nights, but he preserved them and they still were on the earth. So don't think about you're going to be blissed out and go somewhere in some rapture. That's a rapture lies. Nowhere in the Bible can you find rapture. Find rapture in the Bible to come short to me. I've read from Genesis to Revelation to the end and there is no rapture. Rapture is a man's concoction and lie. Can man lie? Well, where did you read about Cinderella being a real woman? Was there really a Jack in the Beanstalk? Was there really a little red riding hood? Was there really a Mother Hubbard and her cupboard? Was it truly a Hansel and Gretel? Maybe there's a Santa Claus. And there's Rudolph and Vixen. And maybe you still believe in two fairies. And trolls under the bridges. Don't ask me, will men lie? No, you're going to have to face life and death right where you are here on earth and I'm here to set judgment in the earth and if you choose me, you can live and if you go against me, you are sure to be destroyed. That's all nations on the earth. So in verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away. Don't wonder if it is or not. It definitely shall. Oh, Lord, if it's going to pass away, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to be to pass away with it unless you are with Yahweh, Ben Yahweh. Unless you're with me, you will pass away with this. And it's going to be a hot fire. And hell is heating up. But of that day, you want to know the day. You know how we are. You don't want to straighten up and do right. You want to know the day and the hour that Yahweh is going to do this. So you can party hardy until that day. Yahweh knows you well. When, when is it going to be, Yahweh Ben Yahweh? Praise Yahweh. When is Yahweh going to destroy the earth? Oh, Yahweh. I want to know. No, no, no. <laughs> but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. If he told me, I might tell you. So my father knows, don't take no chance at all, not even with his son. I'm not even going to tell you. And we are one, but, but that's one he's holding back on me. See, that makes him God over me, you know what I mean? That's why I come as a son. He's he holding one back on me. All the, everything else he's telling me, but he's holding that one. I do not know the day or the hour, but I know the day and the hour is coming. Because my father said so. And I warn you that that day is coming. Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When the Son of Yahweh comes, on the scene, in the flesh, the minds of men will be as they were in the days of Noah. 
thinking evil and doing wicked continually. Now I want to ask you, I am self-proclaimed, self-styled, self-educated, and self-created, self-resurrected, and declaring the name Yahweh that has been a secret, the world's best kept secret. I'm declaring his name. And at my presence, the world is exactly as the word of Yahweh says it would be at my presence. Just like it was in the days of Noah. You just read it, so you know how it was. This confirms I'm not ahead of time. If I came too late, it would be too late for everybody. You couldn't be saved from it. So I'm on time. <clears throat> no one else has declared Yahweh's secret name but me. And I have declared it all over the earth so another son can't come. Because he would be inferior to me. He'd have to try to duplicate my work. And he's too late. Because I am incredible in my performance of carrying out the will of Yahweh on earth, manifesting his name. John 17, 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Yahweh, they were yours, but you gave them to me, and they are keeping your word. Now, in verse 9, I pray for those you have given to me. I am not praying for the world. Why? Because the world is wicked. It's dumb to pray for a wicked man that, that, does, that loves wickedness and does not want to change. It's a wasted prayer. So I don't pray for them. It's right here. I thought the Son of God loved everybody. He loved everybody that's good. You see, the Father loved everybody that's good. Those that's wicked and think wicked and do evil. See, he already destroyed them and you're going to go back to Matthew and see that's what he's going to do in the last day. Now, the same thing. In the meantime, I'm manifesting Yahweh's name to all people on the earth who will receive me and his name. And I'm praying for every one of you that receive me in the name of my Father which I carry the same name. I'm the only person in the history of the world that has come in the name of Yahweh. Show me another. Go to your books and research and antiquity and discover another man that came in the name of Yahweh. I come in the name, with the name, bearing the name, in the power and the protection and the ownership and all that goes with and for the name. For just the name alone is power. The name is so powerful that you can call on the name and face the east and call on the name Yahweh and before you speak, Yahweh will answer you and while you are yet speaking, he hears. Before you call, he answers. Now that's a powerful name. Yahweh's name is so powerful that he says, ask anything in my name. And I'll prove to you that the Son with the same name says, and I say, if you ask anything in my name, my Father will give it to you. Why? Because we have the same name. John 16, 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father 
in my name, he will give it to you. That's how powerful my name, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh is. That you can ask my father, Yahweh, anything in my name and he will give it to you. Why does Yahweh make you ask in my name? Why can't you just ask in his name? See, he won't, he doesn't go for that. John 5, 23. See, he don't, he don't want you playing games. You can't get around me and run to him. You have to come through me. I'm the door. John 5, 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. How can you expect to go to my Father, calling his name for a blessing, ignoring me when I'm the one taught you the name? You would not know his name had I not taught you. But because I look like you, you don't want to honor me as the son. Or maybe because I do not look like you, you may not want to honor me as the son. But that's too bad. Your prayers are not going to be answered unless you ask in my name. I've, I've proven this. And in John 17, 6, see what my job is? I have manifested and made known to you and the world, and I continue to do so, the name Yahweh. In John 5, 43, you say, well, why is your name Yahweh Ben Yahweh? John 5.43, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. But, if another shall come in his own name, you will receive him. You'd rather follow a man that is not divine. You would rather vote for a man to be president over your life and your son's lives and call them to the army and the military to go and die for him rather than receive Yahweh and his son who is creator over all things. Well, I'm here to manifest the name so you will have an understanding of what this name is about to do. Say, I am come in my Father's name. I am come in my Father's name mean, can mean only one thing. His name is my name. My name is his name. To come in his name means that I come with his name. So when you call my name, you call in his name. But you have to have a picture of me in your mind when you ask for something from Yahweh. You have to say, oh Yahweh, bless me in the name of Yahweh, Ben Yahweh. Oh Yahweh, I need your help in the name of Yahweh, Ben Yahweh. Then you'll see your prayers answered. You can't go and face it and say, oh Yahweh. Father, help me. No, you better, you have to see me to get some help. That's why Yahweh calls me to be born from among you, to look like you, and demonstrate that he is supreme.
So the world rejects me because I come in my Father's name. Why does not the world receive the Son of Yahweh? Is it because the world thinks wickedly and evil continually? And the fact that I come teaching morality, promoting morality, is it because I demand morality that people don't run to me? What is it that I have done to cause people not to come? I haven't dropped any bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And I haven't dropped any bombs on Grenada. I, I haven't dropped any bombs on Gaddafi and killed up their little children. I haven't dropped any bombs in Beirut, Lebanon. And I'm not dropping any bombs in Ireland. I'm not hanging anybody on trees, burning anyone at stakes. I'm not overworking you and underpaying you and causing you to be unemployed. But you love people that do all of these things to you. The son of Yahweh comes with healing in his wings. But you go for the people that make you sick. Sell you cigarettes that cause you lung cancer and then teach you to say, I got to die with something. Who said you got to die? Your enemy told you that. I come to give you eternal life. You don't have to die. Noah and his family didn't die. They died later. But see, this is God. We're talking about Yahweh. You don't have to die. I come to give you eternal life. They tell you cigarettes is cancer producing. They tell you alcohol kills the organs in your body. Makes you crazy. You know it makes you crazy. Oh, they ain't going to talk about my stuff. No, I'm talking about life. Why don't you accept me coming to give you life forever? Now, you don't have to, but I've come to tell you what I have to offer. I can prove that my case is authentic. I can prove that my offer is genuine. Your enemies sell you poor and know it causes 999 different diseases and germs. They know that. They know that pork causes cataracts of the eye. They know pork, meat, pig, hog, bacon and ham, shittlers and stuff. They know all of that. Gives you arthritis, lumbago, gout. Stroke, high blood, low blood. They know pork makes you look ugly. You eat it long enough, it'll square you up. All you have to do is bend over, get down on your hands and knees, you look just like that pig. It fattens you up in the strangest places. The enemy of God, Yahweh, offers what he says don't eat the enemy of God offers it to the world they don't make the world eat it but they go eat it and say mm -mm, it's so good try it now I'm back to Matthew 24 proving my case verse 37 but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood, they also were eating, as you eat, everything. <laughs> Yahweh said don't eat. They were eating everything Yahweh said don't eat. Shrimp, all you shrimp eaters are going against the law of God. You love shrimp? It's a stinking thing. You love raw oysters, right? That's not out the shell. You eat cunt. You know those things that's in the ocean? Coming around shell, crustaceans and whatever. You know what you know, you eat all that stuff. 
Well, that's the way they were back in Noah's day. They ate anything. Notice there's no, it didn't say they ate vegetables and produce. <laughs> just eating, you know, you just eat, boy. Come on and eat. Whatever you offer to eat, you go for it. Don't try to look sophisticated at me. I know what you do. Just like they were. Nasty eaters. <laughs> and drinking. Fruit cocktail. No. Fruit nectar. No. Everything that was evil, you drank it. They did and you're doing it today. Wonder why you break out with bumps. You break out with bumps everywhere. No place on your body free from bumps. <laughs> from what you drink. I'm drinking a little toddy, a little scotch. A little gin tonic. Then you're so wicked, you, you want to drink Bloody Mary. You want Mary to be bloody when you drink. Oh, you're wicked. <laughs> huh? Marrying everything. Marry everything. Men marry men, women marry women. Stuff is marrying, they don't know what it is. Some won't let you look. They dress and undress in the dark. Pretend that they are modest. They don't want you to know you have a transfer title on your hand. <laughs> You be laying up 20, 30 years and never saw which boy, you know, you better shine the light on. Check it out. They were doing these things until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And in verse 9, they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, be. Noah announced for 120 years what Yahweh was going to do. And it didn't make any difference. They didn't realize until the flood was rising up above their chin. It was too late. And Yahweh said, it's going to be that same way in my coming. Could the people know? Of course. Who will know? The believers and the saints in Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. So in verse 42, you better watch as well as pray. For you do not know what hour Yahweh and Yahweh is coming to power. See, doth come, doesn't mean I'm coming, I'm going to leave and go out in space and come back again in out of space. No, I'm here. I've already come back. So now all that's left is for me to come to power. And you see signs of me coming to power. You can see the wealth that I am gaining for my disciples. All across the country, you can see it. That's the sign. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. And the wise will pay attention. Now, why again? I ask this question rhetorically. Why is there poverty, hunger, 
sickness, disease, famine, destruction, wars, rumors of wars, murder, rape, AIDS, burglary, hatred, in the earth, greed, lust. Why someone willing to kill you for what you work for? Break in your house and take your life because you're progressive and want something decent. Why is there illiteracy when the technology for world communication is demonstrated? Why are black people in Africa and India being allowed to starve to death while countries like America is paying farmers billions of dollars to plant nothing? That means that the American rulers are the most wicked on the planet to have a good producing land and let millions of people in Africa and India starve to death when for two years in a row America has murdered two million milk cows to keep the price of milk up. When, there, when those two million milk cows that were killed two years ago could have all been shipped to the countries where people are starving. It's an evil, wicked rulership that will watch people starve to death right on television. And then take up a few hundred thousand pounds of grain enough to keep them alive for three or four more days and go over on an aircraft and land in the middle of them and issue this out as if they are caring philanthropists and then while they are over there they are filming to come back to the American public and beg you to send fifteen and sixteen dollars a month to help feed the hungry and take up hundreds of millions of dollars in records but the money and the food never gets there. That's an evil, wicked rulership that would do such a thing as use the food that Yahweh created as a political instrument of genocide. Genesis chapter 1. I'm here to tell you I don't like it. And the wicked will be destroyed for their wickedness. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, Yahweh blessed man, the families of the earth, and said, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Yahweh said, Be fruitful and multiply your children. But the wicked rulers in America lead the world in murdering two million unborn babies every single year. And they call that murder abortion. Just as would be all who believe in abortion should be aborted. This is contrary to the orders and instructions of Yahweh. Yahweh said be fruitful and multiply. Not have your tubes cut. Yahweh said, be fruitful and multiply, not have a hysterectomy. Yahweh said, be fruitful and multiply, not use germicides and firmicides and jellies and, and suppositories. Yahweh said, be fruitful and multiply, not use condoms and rubbers to prevent children. 
Yahweh said, be fruitful and multiply, not murder an unborn baby. How can you call murder abortion and justify it and claim that it's not a, a fetus is not a human being? If it's not a human being, leave it alone and watch and see if it's not. Only the wicked will allow such a law to be rampant throughout their country and then call it legal. Legal according to who? Satan, the devil himself, that's who. But then what do you expect from Satan? He was a murderer from the beginning. John 8:44. I'm against anybody murdering anybody. To think about murdering unborn, innocent children. And then they go all over the earth teaching this. And then some of you are stupid enough to let the devil, the enemy to God. See, they... They're all colors, but you got black doctors, Indian doctors, Japanese doctors, Chinese doctors, white doctors, Jew doctors, Italian doctors. Everybody doc going along with the murder of unborn babies. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the lusts and desires of your father you will do. Why? For he was a murderer from the beginning. Why didn't he tell you about the truth? Because your bow's not in the truth. Why is that? Because there's no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Anyone that does these things is the devil. And I'm here to set judgment in the earth against the devil. A devil is anybody, regardless of your color, that hates the will of the creator, Yahweh. The devil, by definition, you go look up Lucifer and Satan in Webster's Dictionary, and it says he is an opponent of God. He is against the teachings of God. He's against the laws of God. So all bastards on the earth who teach you and who practice a, a, a going against the laws of God is the devil and are to be destroyed and chased out of the whole world. That's what Yahweh says in the word. If you're doing wicked, can you be saved? Some of you say no. I'm glad you're not God. Because if you were God, even you wouldn't be here. You'd have to kill yourself behind that thing. If everybody that was, that's doing wicked couldn't be saved, then none of us would be here. See, I didn't say, can the wicked be saved? No, the wicked cannot be saved. And since the wicked know they cannot be saved, they teach the righteous to do wickedly like them. So that you won't be able to distinguish between them. That's the way Satan hides out on the earth. See, he is indelibly wicked. His nature is indelibly wicked. He's wicked, know it, and love it. And then he wants everybody else to look like him. So he teaches everybody that is righteous to do like he does so that when it's the day of judgment, you can't tell the difference. See, some people came and taught a lie and said, white people are devils. Sure, there are some white people that are devils. But I taught you from the beginning that Lucifer, the father of all devils, was black. And his son Cain was black. But after he killed Abel, a mark was put on him. A white mark was put on him.
See, if you had killed off everybody white on the earth, if you, if you had followed that teaching and killed everybody white off the earth, the biggest devils on the earth are sitting right next to you. <laughs> A black wicked bastard is about the worst that can come up on the earth. There was, a, there was a dangerous song that said, I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> See, you were singing that, boy, you didn't know what you were saying. That was a wicked song. I'm black and I'm proud. And then told you, say it again. I'm black and I'm proud. That's a crazy song. See, Yahweh hates a proud man. Isaiah 2, 11. So you didn't know this. Read. The loftiness of man shall be humble, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day. Verse, verse 12. Read. For the day of the Lord Yahweh of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Imagine a song sung, believed, among our people, giving them a proud mentality, a lofty mind against God. After those songs came, you do your thing, Do your thing, your thing. Do like you want to do. I'll do my thing like I want to. Don't condemn me and I won't condemn you. Do your thing, your thing. Do what you want to do. Is that a righteous song or a wicked song? You have to be careful what songs you let your children listen to. What's the problem with the world? Lack of knowledge of the laws of Yahweh.